then I started realizing Got that my salgado. situation was not the common one for many people here. And I started to question what is, you know, what, why is that I could get a visa? Why, is, why there are so many people out there that cannot uh, do it through this process? And meeting, you know, families and people through Centro Romero opened my eyes to this whole reality that I didn't know. And that is the reason why I decided to work in this field. I wanted to uh, be able to tell this other story for the people that didn't know. Uh, there were many of us. I, I think that there, there's still this story to tell, uh, especially to the, uh, to the white communities, to the African American communities, and to other groups that don't know why, is, you know, what, what, why is we have so many undocumented immigrants in the States, and, and, and it is not just a matter of committing, they are committing crime, or they are here illegally because they don't want to wait in line for a visa. But you know, it's, it's this whole very complicated issue. So through Centro Romero, I got connected to the Human Coalition for Immigrant Refugee Rights. Uh, and I have never done this type of job. I did TV production, I did uh, websites, but it was mostly the commercial part of it. Um, so pretty much what got me the job was my interest in the issue, uh, and also uh, a degree in communication that I had from Loyola. Uh, but I didn't know much about how to do a press conference, how to talk to the media, or how to, you know, express myself or talk about a message or try to do advocacy to media, through media. So um, I started on February 2006, and March 10, 2006 was the first big march. Uh, and I pretty much was thrown, no? Me, me lanzaron ahí al agua que pues yo genere media y que traiga atención de lo, del público, de que se diga a la gente por qué se estaba haciendo esta marcha. And that's how I met a lot of people in the community, mostly Mexican leaders that were the ones that were organizing, you know, and planning these marches. And I also met Javier Salas, and I also met, you know, a lot of other people there. And, um, you know, basically, Throughout the years, I have learned a lot, and I uh, think that these five years, things have changed drastically with Facebook, with you know the social media. Uh, it, it has changed, so it continues to be a, a very um, a, a, an experience that I, where I continue learning every day. Uh, so it's always you know exciting and and very busy and sometimes very stressful, but very rewarding at the end of the day. Um, so I wanted to just share some concepts with you because I'm sure all of you already know what they are, but basically, you know, I, I think that uh, you do it every day, but you don't really give it a name. Uh, so PR networking, uh, who can tell me what networking is, like in general terms? Making connections with people who you can benefit from and you can also benefit from. Yeah, that's right. Anybody else? So, so yeah, so networking is making connections, right? So, you know, do you have... Yeah, that's pretty much what he said, is make, you know, get to meet people and know what they do and eventually, you know, try to get to get ahead so that you can get a message in person and people can benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I guess just to add a little bit, um, so no, somebody knows somebody, you know, and so that other person can help you in some way, shape, or form with what it is your organization or um, whatever you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, when you go to a party on, or you go to a fundraiser, what what is the, the first thing you do? When you don't know anybody in the room, what, what do you do? When you get to this new place. <laughs> Are you the type, you know, because there are some people that are like very outgoing and they go and talk to everybody and, you know, everybody is talking to them. And there's other people that, you know, just sit in, in a room and... So what, what type? You're, you're I, I'll tell anyone that they look familiar. Because <laughs> there's signs that if I go to a girl, they might feel like I'm trying to hit on them. Or if I go to a guy, they kind of look at me like, what is, you know, I mean, like, oh, you know, yeah. and then it's like, you know, you know, so I just say, man, you look familiar, you know, it's like, like, I think I seen you somewhere, and then I'll tell them who I am, and then, and then we start talking about whatever we're there for, so. Mm -hmm. 
How long has been the experience here? Did you guys were able to talk to each other in the morning? Have you been? Do you know each other? Well, no. 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 This is kind of like the first time they're coming together. Well, usually when you go so, to a place, uh, you go because, like in this case, Harris and Lance invited me. So you get into, you know, you get introduced to the, to the people, to the crowd, to the friends, and then you start talking to them because you know, I know him, so some other person knows him, so we get to know each other. But that's how it's known. To know what they do. Yeah, and I think the importance about being good at networking is actually know what is that you want to get out of the place before you even go there, right? Like if you guys are going to a, let's say, to a fundraiser and you pretty much know the type of crowd that you're going to be meeting, mm -hmm. to pick maybe two or three people that you really want to talk to and make that effort to go and talk and actually have like a longer conversation with those people. Uh, you usually have like in big receptions like the hot shots, not like the people that are the most important people. It is very hard to talk to them and maybe that's the people that you want to talk to. Uh, but usually it's very hard to talk to them. But at least you can, you know, go, give them your card, you know, make sure that at least you make the first contact and then when you contact the contact them again, you can tell them, you know, I, I met you last night. But what is very valuable about uh, networking in, I, I think especially you know for people that are working in, in the in, in the in PR and working uh, that need to you know, organizers that need to move people to work with them I think it is important to create solid relationships and and it is good to take your time to go and talk to two or three people and make sure that you know those those are the people that you will continue build your relationships because as, as she says uh, you know they will introduce uh, introduce you to others as well and then you'll be able to expand your network and now the networking term has also changed because with social media now we're pretty much friends of everyone right so it's uh, you know it, it is changing but in general terms you know they are some of the consejos sobre como ser un PR so for example buy in advance who you want to meet be willing to invest 10 minutes with someone before you give up because many times when you start talking to someone and you think, oh, this person really, I mean, what, what, what she's going to do for me, right? So you, when you invest more time, listen a lot. You know, listen what they care about. And then, you know, after that time, then decide, you know, what you can do for them. And maybe you can create, you know, that link in terms of work. Uh, again, focus the conversation on them. Think about how you can help, how you can help them, and then... After you know, after you feel more at ease, you can share your uh, what you want, right? Lo, lo, lo que les interesa a ustedes y para así pues crear una relación. Y después de eso ya pues ustedes pueden volverles a llamar y la cosa es, es más fácil. Y esa misma gente les puede presentar a otros. Uh, any questions around these? I mean, I'm sure it's, these are concepts. These are things that you do all the time. Uh, this I, I did have a, a point when I did the, the, the blog for them, mm -hmm. I told them to bring a business card. I don't know how many of them brought a business card, but so far a lot of them have asked me for my business card, <laughs> but nobody has offered me a business card. <laughs> so that's point yeah. number one, you need to create one, even if you don't have a job. Who okay. cares? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's totally true. Uh, so, any questions? Yeah. Any else uh, on this. So I'm going to move towards like with uh, communications and media and social media is. Uh, and that's pretty much what I, what I do. Who knows what earned media is? Well, I, I would like to uh, just yeah. make a point about the, um, um, the importance of uh, the way you present yourself, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the way you uh, um, shake, and shake, right? And, and, and the confidence of something that, that really makes an impression. Mm -hmm. And you know, we know uh, yeah, I think that is actually a very, very good point. I mean, it is about the way you present yourself. Usually, you know, when they give you, how do you call it in English? I always forget the fish handshake or whatever. That's so weird. And a lot of times it happens, right? They are <laughs> trying to, like, uh, you know, meet somebody and they are kind of, so that, that, that gives you an, an impression, right? Is this person reliable? You know, you question other things. Um, but anyway, so in terms of earned media, I know it's there, but does anyone want to talk what earned media is? Do you guys are familiar with that term? No? <laughs> Anybody? It's basically 
I think you even said it. It's like come up with an issue, with, with a topic or a situation, a problem that it's takes a lot of people off, but also make it appealing to the, to the media, to the newspaper, radio, TV, and that, so that they get interest and so they can power the issue, so that people don't come up. Yeah, and uh, it refers also to, uh, you know, you have paid media, all the commercials you see on TV, everything, all of that is paid media. So that is sorry, I mean, that is, when you have money, that is not difficult to make. Now, the struggle with uh, non-profit organizations and communities is that we don't have money to pay for like a $100,000 app.